Hi, it's Vince and Chris for DTMMB Media. How are you doing, Chris? Pretty well. How are you doing, man? All right. We're about to uh, listen to what's going to be episode, I believe, 14, which is uh, one of our weekdays episodes. We won't go into the whole fucking numbering shit. Uh, I, know, hey, I wasn't going to say anything. I know it's rid- I saw your face. I know we were going there. It's, I know it's ridiculous. Uh, I think we. I thought we had a pretty good show. Um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this, especially when you compare it to the last weekday's episode. Oh, yeah, it's 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 uh, much, much better than that. We have some exciting things uh, that's coming up. We have our new announcer, uh, Spike Reel, that you'll hear at the beginning of the show. So that's great. Uh, a couple good sponsors, and uh, Smitzers again, so you can look Smitzers, forward to that. Smitzers, fine products of Smitzers. And uh, several good stories. Uh, you're going to hear about cyborg monkeys, uh, some moose die-offs. Uh, Some uh, Latino curves. Latino curves, yeah, you know that's going to be racy, right? Uh, some addictive, well, maybe not. Well, okay. Some uh, addictive Oreos. Uh, apparently, they're like cocaine now. Uh, we discuss uh, a couple of things. We're we're confused on what uh, boffins are. Yeah, Bo- so learn a couple of exciting new terms t- uh, tonight: boffin and rasher. I'm not sure if we learned them per se, but uh, they're definitely mentioned. <laughs> no, we we did not learn them. You're right. No, but, uh, we will learn them. Uh, I'm going to use boffin all the time. I'm not even really sure what it means yet, but I'm just I, I know already that I'm going to use it all the time. Bonkers boffin. Yeah, boffinry. Bonkers boffinry. Yeah. Uh, We talk about Michael Bay a little bit and uh, what happened on the set of the Transformers. Exciting entertainment news there. Uh, And uh, Dr. Manny Alvarez uh, speaks out against The Walking Dead, which we have a nice little conversation about. Yeah, I think it really gets kind of to the heart of American society, really. It really does. It's a hard-hitting issue. Uh, We have a thing about men and their low voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're cheaters, all of them. Uh, eating some popcorn at the movies apparently uh, makes it tough for advertisers. So now we're gonna go. Let's go ahead and say it right now. If you're eating popcorn, let's go ahead and stop. Yeah, Just right. Put it aside, especially when you're about to hear the Smitzer stuff and uh, the the other ad we do. Uh, Stop eating that popcorn just yep. for a second, and then just, trust it. Just yeah. for right now, you don't know what we're talking about, but trust us. Right. Uh, apparently, marmoset monkeys are politer than we are when it comes to conversations. And uh, possibly politer than other types of monkeys, but we didn't really get into that. No, not at all. And then uh, we abruptly end with a uh, ridiculous titled story. So that's where it ends. But I, I think you'll enjoy this one, and uh, so give it a listen. Do you agree? Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and agree with you. Huh? Okay, that's two thumbs up. And here it comes. It's weak dazed. All right, stand by, Chris. Stand by, Vince. Music up. And cue Spike. Announcing three, two, one. After a grueling week at their day jobs and feeling in a daze, Chris and Vince discuss the news they think you need to know. This is Week Dazed News. I'm your host, Vince DeGeorge, and as with me, I've got my co-host, Chris Herndon. Hello, everyone. You might have heard that snazzy intro. That's our uh, new announcer, Spike Real. Spike, total, get total, it done. Total pro, total yeah. pro. He's, he's, he's quiet, except for uh, when we give him something to read. He's a total pro in that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with Spike, uh, I've got a uh, link that you can reach him. It's uh, dtmmb.com. Oh wait, I forgot the media. Hold on, let me start over. I don't even know. I don't even know who we are anymore. DTMMBmedia.com slash spike. You can get in touch with Spike and uh he might do some work for you. Just just keep in mind he's not much of a conversationalist. No, if you write something, he'll read it and uh do it very well. But uh yeah, he's not he doesn't speak a whole lot otherwise that we're aware of. No, we have a lot of interesting stories for you this week, and uh Chris, why don't you get us started? Well, a very exciting story here. This just in. Uh, scientists have developed cyborg monkeys with prosthetic arms. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not the long-awaited cyborg monkey butler that I know you've been waiting for, Vince. I mean, I think you already have some advanced uh, orders in for that. Right, right. Um, but there's some exciting news on various 
uh, important science and tech beats today as we learn that boffins have achieved breakthroughs in the allied fields of brain chip monkeys, robotics, and cybernetics. What, what are boffins? Um, is that like a monkey itself? These monkeys are developing monkey technology. I mean, it's pretty scary. Yeah, I believe it's it's kind of a yeah, it's a type of monkey. It's a species of monkey. It's kind of like a chimpanzee. Oh, maybe. wait a minute, hold on. I see this is another story out of the UK. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it's probably not a type of monkey actually. It's probably just some kind of crazy British slang, you know, like uh, wanker or something like that. Yeah, you boffin. Yeah, you boffin. You. They're they're probably. Wanker scientists, you know, and they can't call them wanker scientists, so they just call them boffins. Bloody boffins. Yeah, bloody boffins. Bloody boffins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <That's> very, <laughs> you sound like a chimney sweep there for a second. Well, yeah, I was, yeah, I was straight out of Mary Poppins. <laughs> Hello, Gabna. <laughs> Hello, all. Um, so, um, okay, I'm not going to read that in a British accent, even though I started to <laughs> there. Okay, so... Um, uh, so they've been working on these boffins, um, yeah, whether they're monkeys or wanker scientists, we're not sure. Mm-hmm. But they have been working out a way to equip monkeys wielding robot arms with a sense of touch. Rather than monkey-robot or monkey-robot-cyborg combination butler terminators, <laughs> <laughs> however, this research is aimed at making uh, robot arms for human beings work better. This research is funded by our friends at the U.S. military Bonkers Boffinry Bureau, <laughs> otherwise known as DARPA, uh, hoping to deliver better replacement limbs for American troops injured in the wars on the various wars on stuff that we've done here in America. The UK has some interesting takes on journalism, I gotta say. Yeah, um, yeah, we're gonna have to do, we, we might have to include some, some notes on what a boffin is here in a future podcast or something. Mm, yeah, definitely. You know, I remember last show we had these uh, things out of DARPA, they, they were things that could run 16 miles an hour. Uh, they were basically like ninja robots. They were now, stealth ninja running <laughs> robots. And now we're making cyborg monkeys. Uh, I mean, do these scientists watch movies? Do they ever, you know, get in front of a screen? Because this stuff seems extraordinarily bad as far as ideas go. Yeah, it's like you know, it was bad enough when it looked like in the last, uh, you know, last week when it looked like we had terminators being developed to right. wipe us off the planet. Now they're mixing Terminators and damn dirty apes. Right. I, know. I mean, come on. I'm starting to think that DARPA may stand for something like uh, domination against real people. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know about that last part. but So the last A, let me just make this clear. The last A in DARPA. <laughs> Is you just think a, might stand for ah uh, woo <laughs> more like a just like a primal scream of of possibly a cyborg monkey you know ah woo I don't know it's it's a crazy boffin thing I don't know yeah it's it's bonkers boffinry <laughs> because that's the bureau of bonkers boffinry the DARPA is but anyway well apparently there's also going on to our next story uh, there's a moose die off and it's uh it's alarming some uh, if if you were British you would say it's alarming some boffins but. Uh, being in the USA, uh, land of freedom, we're going to call them scientists like they like they deserve. Bloody hell. So uh, all across North America, and this story is out of the New York Times, so you know it's legit. Uh, across North America and places as far flung as Montana and uh, British Columbia, New Hampshire and Minnesota, moose populations are in steep decline. And no one is really sure why. 20 years ago, Minnesota had a Two geographically separated moose population, Uh, one of them has virtually disappeared since the 1990s, declining to fewer than 100, which was originally around 4,000. The other population in northeastern Minnesota is dropping 25 25 cents a year, it's cheapening, uh, cheapening, uh, 25% per year, and is now fewer than 3,000, down from 8,000. The moose mortality rate Used to be around eight to twelve percent a year. Uh, apparently, that's that's increasing at, at that rate. As a result, wildlife officials have suspended all moose hunting. Well, I, this isn't that surprising because there's that classic saying, you know, like uh, they're dropping like moose. Or, oh yeah, of or, or it might be meese. Yes. Actually, it might be dropping like flies. I could be completely wrong there. Uh, dropping like Mises? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't Mises know. to Pieces. Yeah, I, I get I might get my animals mixed up, so I might have uh, you know screwed that up. Apparently, there was a mysterious woman dressed in black on the scene, and she commented in uh, uh, somewhat of an accent. She said, Uh-oh. "I don't know. Maybe moose had accident. Has anyone seen squirrel with goggles? By the way." <laughs> Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. That's, moose and squirrel. Moose and squirrel. If uh, 
I, I hope I don't. <laughs> hope I don't have to explain that joke, but it, it might be possible. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, drop us a message, and we'll <laughs> we'll let you know what we were trying to do there comedically. And if you're of uh, Russian uh, descent, uh, forgive us. All right, that could have been quite accurate. You can uh, leave me a compliment online as well. Uh, you can reach us on Twitter at, at DTMMB Media. I'm not sure if you want to say that all the compliments you're going to get, it might shut down the internet. Yes. Uh, well, here's a, here's a story that's close to my heart, Vince, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, beautiful but deadly. Latinos' curves put them at risk. Ooh, Latino curves. I know yeah. what they're at risk from, that's for sure. Heck uh, yeah, man. I used, I, I used to actually uh, uh, have a subscription to Latino Curves. It's a <laughs> website. Um, I don't know if I'd re- recommend it for anyone under 18. I, I believe it's also a popular chain of uh, workout places now. Uh, I, they started with Curves, and then there's Latino Curves, uh, which is another place. I, I say keep packing it on. You know, the more the more the the, the merrier. Apparently, I don't know. Let's get to the story. It's got to be great. Well, in a 2010 study, Abby Berenson and her colleagues sur- surveyed uh, over a thousand Hispanic women who went to public health clinics in Texas about their weight. The researchers found about 25% of overweight Hispanic women perceived their weight as quote-unquote normal, while only 15% of non-Latino white women did. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, Says Berenson, Hispanic and African-American women were more likely to consider their weight normal when, in fact, they were overweight. Um, Helen Casillas died of a heart attack at age 44. Okay. I'm not sure who Helen Casillas is. Uh, but apparently it's important to the story. Uh, Latinos overall are also less likely to lose weight and uh, are more vulnerable to cardio- cardiovascular disease, risk factors, and other obesity-related diseases, the study authors wrote. Well, that was a lot more fucking depressing than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I didn't think we were going with cardiovascular disease risk. I thought we were, it was going to be a lot I more I know, it's going to be like uh, possibly, you know, rape or something like that. <laughs> R- r- rape? <laughs> Okay. Well, that, that, all right. I don't know if that would have made it any lower lighthearted. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm not saying it's lighthearted, but I mean, that's kind of the risk I was thinking of. Maybe not the more fun part that we were going towards. Uh, I mean, I'm all for Latino curves, but not necessarily the risk part of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The more the cushion, the better the pushing was kind of what I was thinking. Right. Yeah. Except in this case, it's with, the, with the, the more the, the consenting more, adults, not, of course. not rape victims. Or in this case, it's the more the cushion, the more the cardiovascular disease. Apparently. It doesn't roll off the you know, tongue. Like the, the way. It does, not the no. same way, that's for sure. Not really. Well, you know, there is another story that is maybe a little uh, more uplifting, I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, apparently, Oreos are just as addictive as cocaine, researchers say. This is uh, from natmonitor.com. Researchers at Connecticut College contend that the America's favorite cookie is just as addictive as cocaine, co- cocaine, cocaine. I'm trying to do it with like a Cuban accent or something, or morphine. Uh, professor- are you sure that's not cocaine or morphine? Uh, it could be. Uh, one or the other, uh, both are acceptable. Okay. Uh, uh-oh, I see a problem here. Professor Joseph Schrader. Or is it Schroeder? Schroeder. Yeah, yeah, I lost last time. I'm going to go with Schrader this time since I lost last time. I'm going to go with Schroeder. All right. And his team of researchers found that rats formed an equally powerful association between the pleasurable effects of eating Oreos and a specific environment as they did between cocaine or morphine and a specific environment that... It's a weird. Uh, I think I, re- I think I doubled up on that sentence. <laughs> Just to be clear, uh, listeners, uh, there is a specific environment involved that that apparently they associate with cocaine and morphine. Very specific, uh, also environment and specific. Yeah. They also uh, discovered that eating Oreos triggered more neurons in the brain's pleasure center than exposure to the aforementioned drugs. You know, this makes a lot of sense to me because I. I don't know. I never knew why until now. Mm-hmm. Whenever I get Oreos, I crush them up and I like to rub them on my gums. Now that makes sense, and this also explains why I always wanted to have milk with my cocaine. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, maybe that little white filling that's in the center is actually uh, like cocaine packed together. I mean, that would that would explain things. Well, usually, I mean, I just crush up the the, the chocolate parts. Mm-hmm. Now, the, now the white part, I usually put in a spoon and cook it. Okay, and t- down into a into a liquid, mm-hmm. uh, mix it with maybe a little bit of water, and put it in a syringe, mm-hmm. and then I find that it's very pleasurable just to inject that right into a vein. Sometimes a vein in my arm, sometimes between my toes. Yeah, I do that too, except I follow it up with milk and a and a syringe. I have to try that. That could be very refreshing. Okay. I can see where I take the edge off a little bit. Definitely. Um, for our next story, um, a rasher of bacon a day can harm a man's fertility. Half portion of processed meat. 
significantly harm sperm quality. All right. I got to stop you right away. What are you going to say something about sperm? Uh, no, I'm, I'm fine with sperm.